This video I'm putting together right now is kind of show you some of the best practices we're doing here at KFVS in Cape Girardeau with the interactivity and the hit windshields. Now there's not a lot for us to show you right now on our first alert Doppler network, but I will show you how we kind of did our uh, interactive windshield to where you press anywhere up here underneath the Doppler network and that's going to activate our interactive buttons and and we can navigate uh, through different scenes and we can we have a home button that'll bring us back to our home look. Uh, we've got a zoom and of course that's going to be your box zoom. Notice it changes to blue to know that we have it uh, as a zoom. So there's the box zoom right there and of course pan center in and center out. We like these here in severe weather. Let's say we're in a little too close and there's a storm here near Carbondale and I want to center around that. I can do that through the navigation and if we wanted to look at something in three dimension I hit the 3D button and then another button will pop up. It's called slice and this is what we activate to actually draw the line and then tilt the camera back and look at the storm in 3D. That has come in handy quite uh, numerous times on the air and we're tracking hail cores and such. We can change the different types of data we're looking at. We've got uh, storm relative velocity, velocity sweeping will be fi the five radars. We can change it to the winter mode right here. We can stop the loop making it right now or if the loop is going and we see a particular storm at a certain strength and want to show how it's decreasing we can hit pause and then loop and it'll start over again so we can pause it at any certain time as well and of course we have lightning over there to show us the lightning. A couple of other things we've added and we're still going to be adding to data uh, two is of course the hail tracker we like to show and then also the uh, rain uh, rate so we can kind of show you where the rainfall rate is on this. And then finally the draw section we have on our hit windshield uh, we can do the cones of course where we can draw it out based on the certain speed of the storm and then this the areas that are affected will uh, pop up and we can also do things like draw cold fronts. We can use this with the satellite to show where the fronts are when they're moving through, of course. And uh, in addition to that, we can also draw with the curve. We do this a lot when we're showing the velocity data. When we want to show kind of right where the tornado couplet is. We'll do that and kind of explain where it is and then draw the storm cone out from there. So that is a look at uh, our Doppler network that we have with the hit windshield and when we touch up above the banner we can make everything disappear. Now some of the other things we've been working on are uh, day planners and dinner, different interactivities. This is actually this whole area is a dynamic panel and if I touch anywhere on it it brings up the look for the entire heartland with the temperatures. All these are programmed in the wizard if we want to if we disagree with the ICAST data which uh, today we definitely did. It's a little cooler than what the ICAST was showing, but you can see how the dynamic panel slides up to the to the north of the graphic and then the whole heartland shows up to give everybody a pretty good view of what's happening across the area. Our current temperature map now kind of uh, we've got an interactive button that is the shape of three different sections of the heartland. We have an interactive button that is the shape of southeast Missouri and when we press it, we have even more temperature data show up for the southeast Missouri to kind of hyper localize the area. Same story with uh, southern Illinois. We could pop out the southern Illinois counties and then for western Kentucky and northwest Tennessee. Well, let me let me do that again because I just missed the wrong button. So we're going to go ahead. There we go. Western Kentucky and northwestern Tennessee. You can see um, the counties pop up and we have a numerous locations across the heartland uh, to kind of give you a better idea of what's happening. Now we also have some other current temperature uh, forecasts that kind of combine. We've got current temperatures. Let's say I shoot Mount Vernon here and touch it. Next 12 hours pop up. We kind of use this in the morning or even in midday to kind of give you an idea of what's going to happen over the next uh, 12 hours. This is a scene launch that we're doing here and I have it for all the main cities in the heartland. You can see it'll give you the forecast for the next 12 hours. We could take it one step further and let's say 10 o'clock at night we like to use this. Same story, temperature, and then it starts now, which would be 10 o'clock at night, and then it starts at 8 o'clock in the morning to give you tomorrow's forecast. And notice the banner changes to the following day. It says day planner, so it goes from current temperatures. We press on the temperature, and then it'll change to Thursday's day planner because tomorrow's Thursday. It'll start at 8 o'clock and go through 6 p.m. to help get 
give viewers an idea of uh, what's happening in their neck of the woods. Another aspect we've used is wind chill, kind of interactive with the temperature. We've made the panel itself a scene launch, and when you press a certain city, let's say like Mount Vernon, it'll spin, and that'll be the wind chill temperature. It just kind of gives a, a neat interactive activity, like Paducah, we could say, okay, it's 35, but right now it feels like 26, just adding a little bit more in the way of uh, interactivity. Same thing we did with the first current temperatures for tomorrow morning's lows. We can show this map if we have extra time. We've got those interactive buttons where we can really dig in and show you hyper local across southeast Missouri. Same story for southern Illinois right here with the morning lows. And then the same story as well as we head towards western Kentucky and northwestern Tennessee. Again, that uh, interactive button is actually the shape that was great uh, that we saw in that webinar. That's what we used how to figure out to make that. We got the same thing with the high temperatures for tomorrow. Interactivity, we pop out the sections of the area based on that interactive button. And uh, all this stuff, by the way, is not only uh, RPM data or ICAST data, but you can override that with the wizard, and we do that quite often as, of course, with these shallow Arctic air masses like we're seeing today, uh, the uh, ICAST data was about five degrees off. So seven day forecast, we've all seen this, how we've kind of used different ideas and we have, um, you know, interactive pop outs for each day where we can kind of get in a little closer. But something else we've done with the seven day forecast is we've made a weekend panel that slides out. As long as you press on Saturday morning's low, you press on Saturday's morning's low, Saturday and Sunday slide out and you can put anything in here you want for the weekend forecast. And right now we're showing where we have the possibility of some light snow moving in over the weekend. And that's why we built this graphic here showing the possibility of an inch or so of snow across the heartland. It just gives you a better uh, understanding of how to whatever's happening. Let's say you have a big event over the weekend. You can do a big event planner and then you still have Saturday and Sunday rather than just Saturday or Sunday. And then you can continue to pop out each day as you want. Let's say here this is uh, forecast lows ICAST data. We have not wizarded this yet as you can tell we disagree by a few degrees on that. But uh, that's what we're doing here at KFVS and uh, hopefully this was uh, to show you that we are utilizing the uh, knowledge that was given to us through the uh, webinars and uh, trying to uh, make our interactivity as well as we can for uh, forecasting and for the uh, newscasts.